Hey guys, you here, Ray KJ G, and welcome to another GTA 5 video. Today I'm bringing the top 20 best lap time cars within the game. I'm going to be bringing back the top 10, top 5 series to revisit them and to update you guys with the recent game changes. Obviously, a lot of things have changed ever since I started this series. So let me know in the comments below what you guys want to see if you're going to be featured on that particular video in your bottom right corner where you guys are sitting there chilling with your comment. So anyway, this particular footage, a lot of time has been put into it, about a few days, and also a lot of money has been invested from GTA 5 multiplayer. I've spent about four to five mil customizing and you know selling, replacing cars, and uh, sort of testing these. I spent a lot of hours obviously trying to push myself for the best lap time. And you also got to understand that this is very track dependent, so the order will be different for a different track. So that's what you got to understand, because obviously certain cars will be more beneficial in the certain tracks over another. So for this particular track, it's quite short, so it doesn't have that many straights for cars that have you know top you know better top speed and may not benefit from this maximum potential and capability from that particular car. So that's something you also got to take into consideration. But hey, at the end of the day, all the cars have been tested on this particular track, so that's a fair test, I suppose. But as I said. Don't think that this list is permanent for every other track because that's not going to be the case. And uh, of course, the order will be completely different to another track. So anyway, I wanted to add in a couple of bonus cars. I'm sure for those of you that are probably curious to see what would the other close competitors look like for the top 20. So the car that came at 22nd spot was the Penubra, the Miyamachi Penubra sports car, which can be only obtained if you find it on multiplayer. So I suppose it's kind of rare, but you can easily find it if you spend quite a bit of time searching for it near your apartment area the original apartment that is and uh, you can sort of customize it to the point where it looks completely different to the original car which is pretty cool however the performance lacks on this car that's the only downside so it's not on par with other sports cars within this category so hey it is what it is so the reason why i wanted to also make this video is because of the changes the recent changes from the recent patches obviously the spoiler makes a huge difference now to the traction and downforce around corners so that will add a few seconds to a fully customized car that has a spoiler compared to a car that does not have a spoiler so that will make a huge difference obviously uh, but a couple seconds i'd say for your best lap time if you have if your car has a spoiler so that could possibly benefit a car and actually you know even beat a car that would have had a car that did not have a spoiler beaten it at first before the patch now because of the patch that car would have probably beaten the car without a spoiler anyway the point is you get what i'm saying at 21st spot we have the bullet all right and this is surprising to me because the bullet is a supercar and in a way it's not really surprising because it's the bullet and you sort of expect it uh, to not be that great but a lot of other games that has the four gt does really well but in this game it's not the case and it doesn't really scale properly but i mean it is what it is it's kind of expected self-explanatory when you actually try it for yourself you'd expect this not to be that great around a lap and around a track it doesn't matter what track it is it's not particularly great and it's kind of weird because even though i saw i've had a slight collision day against the wall this was my best lap out of all the other laps i've tested for many hours which made no sense whatsoever but here's the funny thing with this game right with this game hitting a wall with the side of your car, increases your revs, gives you higher revs, which means it's got better transmission, better acceleration, and you actually benefit from it, especially with the Zentorno. I ain't even lying. Try it for yourself. Hit a damn wall with your car, right? When you turn in the corner, you're going to benefit more with the revs, and you're going to have better acceleration than the car that takes that corner normally. It's crazy. Anyway, 20th spot, we have the Korean Sultan. Surprising. Damn, what the hell? This is... You might manage to do it. Better than the freaking 4 GT by a second. I mean, one minute, three seconds, people. Obviously, it's fat spoiler helping that out. Because if this did not have the spoiler, I guarantee you, it would not have beaten the lap time of the bullet. That's a guaranteed fact. All right. So with these 1.14 changes, now you know this car is pretty damn decent. And it makes the top 20 spot. All right. So, you know, the thing about this car... The general balance of it is great. Obviously, the performance yet again lacks with the general acceleration and top speed. But that's okay. That is fine, you know. And hopefully, this video, you know, you guys find it useful. And I've, you know, the time that I've spent is not wasted for uh, your, you know, for you guys not being satisfied. I'm not sure if you guys find this useful or not. I wanted to do it anyway because I was curious to see if these uh, were significant changes due to the recent changes, obviously, with the patch and whatnot. So, uh, traction, obviously, has improved. Let me know your thoughts about this, because obviously cars without spoilers will not benefit, and it's very, very frustrating for a lot of you that 
obviously like say for example like the adder now it's gonna probably get smashed by other cars with spoilers by a few seconds so anyway 19th spot we have the banshee now this car all right this car is interesting it's one of those cars that does have the tendency to oversteer not to the extent compared to the other cars within the category it's a pretty awesome car it did it in one minute two seconds 0.822 and the only downside to this is the acceleration. This car mostly benefits from the top speed. It's one of the far, best for top speed. As I said, that potential is not there. Why am I getting a phone call? Bloody fish nipples. Sorry, mum. Mum. Mum, I'm in the comments. So, so sorry. Back back to this. Um, where was I? So, yeah. This car doesn't have... It hasn't reached sort of... His ma would not have reached, sorry, the maximum potential on this particular track. So, uh, that's sort of the downside, I suppose. But... I guess you sort of understand and take that into con consideration and perspective of what this car would do on a, sh a track that consists of a lot of straights. But I personally feel that the proper track does not consist of a lot of straights. But I can understand it. there needs to be a balance. And I, I understand that this track does not have that balance. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I really wanted to just go for a competitive feel to it rather than sort of the balance. Because I know for a fact that competition is there when the track is smaller because it's less things to concentrate on and that means it invites a lot of players who don't have the ability to race properly compared to a proper racer to have the chance and opportunity to learn quickly to be able to adapt to the track and do well on it you see at the 18th spot you got the coquette and the reason why i did not sort of edit this down to sort of you know uh show you little bits of this and that to make it a shorter videos because i wanted to show you the whole uncut version of the best lap time that i got for this particular car so what i want you guys to do right if you guys are up for the challenge go ahead and try and beat all my lap times with all of these cars that you're seeing right now with my personal best see if you can beat it and if you guys can beat it then all you got to do is just tweet me an image with your phone or whatever on twitter link in the description below for that of your lap times with these fully customized sports and supercars on Little Soul, which is a track that is available on Rockstar Social Club, which there is a link to in the description below. Try to beat my lap time. See if you can. I bet you any money you won't be able to beat my Zentono lap time. I guarantee you because that Zentono lap time was inspirational. All right. Okay. I'm not a better. I don't bet. But I put, put that to the side. But I'm just saying it's, it will be pretty difficult to beat. All right. So go ahead and try and beat these lap times. Anyway, go ahead. As I said. Try and make your own list from your own tracks that you personally like and submit them. So all you got to do is 17th spot. We have the Carbon Azir. I was actually disappointed with this car. I was expecting a lot from this, you know. It is quite a fast sports car, but in the category, one of the downsides to it is the general acceleration when taking a corner, especially when corners that are above 90 degrees. And it's not that beneficial. Good tendency to understood cut a bit. And it only managed to do one minute. 0.195 seconds you know i honestly legit i was pushing myself to the point i've done so many tr freaking laps and so, so many hours spent and i don't know how many good damn phone calls i'm gonna get a sweat so yeah where was i yeah so uh yeah 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 uh you guys can see you know your preferences obviously free free to skip the video if you want if you already know some of these lap times free free to stay around it's down to you i'm here to satisfy everyone so go ahead and oh my god, that smells good. That's some good shit right there. Holy shit. Is that lemon? Okay. Anyway, the point is, that was number 17. We've got another 16 more cars to show you. Now, the list gets interesting about here. This is where everything gets a bit tight. You know, we definitely got to use somewhat of a, I don't know, wow. Okay, first of all, Alpha. Alpha is ridiculous. I, I was surprised with the Albany Alpha, you know, because I, I haven't used this car much. And when I, when I started using it here, the handling is absolutely amazing. The only downside to this car is you get that slight tendency to uh, get, sort of, get, uh, you know, take that corner a little bit more rigid than the other cars because of the length of this car. So when, when there's corners that is above 90 degrees, you won't benefit as much with this car. But the general sort of corners is roughly about 90 degrees. It is amazing with this car. The response is great. You know, you've got a perfect balance between understeer and oversteer. So when you take these corners, you're going to take them with such ease and comfortability. You know, the only problem is, as I said, it's the length. Why am I going to have a fucking phone call, man? My sincere apologies. I've not had this many interruptions in one commentary session before. And due to the fact that this is a very long video, I'm not going to be restarting it. And my apologies for shouting. I'm just... I get very frustrated easily because I do spend a lot of time on my YouTube channel than real life so i'm here to satisfy and if i don't satisfy then i'm not satisfied 
Anyway, we're going to move on to the 15th spot. By the way, great, great performance by the Alpha there. Wasn't expecting that. Round of applause, mate. For making it to the top 20. Now, for the Comet, on the other hand, I was slightly disappointed. I was expecting quite a bit from this. For those of you that can perfect this car, I'm sure you can get a slightly better lap time. I'm confident I did pretty well with this. You know, I must say myself, I understand the majority of the cars and how they work in this game. And... The fact that you got to understand the Comet is a rather technical car, especially you got to understand with its rear and its tail is rather tail happy at certain situations. But after 1.14, that tail happy situation slightly reduced, so you still get an element of control to a certain extent depending on how fast they're going. But if you really want to push yourself for the maximum potential with this particular car, you really got to be careful because you got to expect quite a bit of tail swings left and right depending on the corner that you're taking with the complete opposite direction. So the spoiler also is kind of distracting in a way because it's such a humongous motherfucker. Now at the same time, you know. Got to say, you know, it's a pretty awesome car, obviously, considering from GTA 4 was an amazing car, one of the best cars to be using in a race, but GTA 5, that really wasn't the case due to the fact that the handling was slightly different and the general shit is also just generally different, slightly different, uh, I don't know, it's, it's one of those things, man, down to preference. But anyway, number 14, the Pegasi Vaca actually made it in the top 20, which surprisingly for me, in fact, you know, I was like, okay, cool, I suppose this, this could be there, uh, I wasn't really that sort of excited about this car because I knew sort of comparing this to the Infernus the Infernus smashed this car I mean the acceleration on this car is pathetic let's be serious I don't know if you guys have seen that car if you can't so check it out if you haven't but this car definitely feels like a sports car to me I feel like it should be within the sports category uh, that, that's just my opinion guys obviously you can state yours let me know your thoughts in the comments below that'd be great appreciate it obviously uh, you can tell a lot from just looking at this footage like how the car responds obviously you guys don't understand I've pushed myself for these best lap times obviously if I push myself further I'll probably end up crashing into a wall or something but you know you, there are certain limits for everything right so uh, anyway the lines were pretty much exactly the same for every single car that you see within these lap time tests uh, general sort of um, lines to take is always key to make it such a fair test when it comes to lap times, right? And it obviously everything else has to do with the car's performance and response time and all of that, which I need to consider when using a car. So anyway, number 14 sport, Vaca with one minute, one second, 7.766. But at number 13, we have the Serrano. This was another car that I was disappointed with because I was expecting this to be in top 10 spot. That was not the case. This managed to do it in one minute, 1.094. And I've done this, I've spent about a good few hours in this car. I ain't gonna lie to you. And I, Obviously, it's not like a placebo effect because the way I see this car and the way I feel, so I listen to its engine, right? It feels like it's going super fast. I feel like it's going like the Cheetah. It's going like the Infernus, you know? It's going so super fast around these corners. I'm like, wow, I'm going to definitely get a lap time within a minute. But that was not the case. Every time I was doing this, I was getting... So I feel like, you know, on my screen in the bottom right, when crossing the finish line, I was getting a minute or somewhat. But I wasn't expecting to get a minute point oh one. That That's not the way I saw this car. And it's disappointing because I could not get that below to, uh, you know, 1.00 instead, right? I don't mind if it was 1.009 Saturn, but that was not the case. It was oh, it was always 0.9 or 0.097, you know, 0.97, 098. That was the lap times I was getting when I was pushing myself. So I was extremely disappointed, but it's still a great car, generally speaking, and definitely should give it a go. It's a fun car to drive. It does have the tendency to oversteer quite a bit, though, if you do push yourself around the corner, especially with the spoiler edition and obviously with a better sort of momentum going around with that extra speed. Anyway, you got the Massacre coming at number 12 spot. This car, obviously, we know it's got the best top speed out of the majority of the sports cars. And this car is more beneficial on tracks that are sort of up on the hills, a lot of straights and whatnot. So you've got to take that into consideration with its top speed. But, you know, tracks aren't always about top speed. It's always about, you know, if the car can take a corner properly, it's got that response time around the corner. And did someone just let one rip? Are you serious? Bro, you can't be letting one rip when I'm doing the commentary. So, anyway, this car did it in one minute point. Eight, nine, eight. If that shit hits my nostrils, I swear someone's getting punched. Anyway, what the fuck was that? Holy shit. Nah, nah, that's donkey shit, bro. Fuck that. So, this is number 12 spot, guys. And the Massacre is a really good car as well. You gotta take that into consideration. The only downside to it is the rigidness, you know, it's, it's got that insane level of traction and sometimes it doesn't carry that momentum and the, this turning circle is pretty poor in this car as well. So, you gotta take that into consideration. But yeah, it did manage to do it. One minute point eight nine eight, and then say it is what it is, and you see there, um, Piccolo strong a little bit there, my man. Piccolo, what are you doing, man? All right, number eleven spot we have the Adder. Oh my goodness me, the Adder. Out of all the cars, managed to do it in one minute point zero zero eight seven one. Now, 
one of those cars, man. No spoilers, no customizable options. So it's not going to be changing from the original state before 1.14. And the traction stays the same. The momentum stays the same around the corner. It's not particularly great for 90 degree. Uh, you know, corners above 90 degree. It is rather rigid just because of its overall size and shape. And the way the general turning circle works on this is not particularly great as well. Reminds me of the um, Sacro with slightly less traction, put it that way. So, it is what it is. And it's sort of, I sort of expected this as well. Because Ada is not particularly my favourite car. And here's the thing you got to understand. I'm not being biased in this whatsoever. I'm not favouring one car over the other. I wanted to push myself with every single car. That's exactly what I do. Use an equivalent time for every single test. And this turned out to be that disposition after pushing myself for all these hours. So at level position, you have the adder. Now moving on towards the 10th position here. This is the Infernus. Pretty darn close lap, uh, similar to the adder, going into the point eight again. And uh, this is where, as I said, things get so, so close. And it's crazy because now considering that, okay, so if it's that close to the adder, would you have said before 1.14, the Infernus would have been slower than the adder in this particular track? Yes, it would have been because the traction would not have made a difference before the patch. But now it makes a difference. You get the extra few seconds and there you go. You know, Infernus now is actually, in fact, better than the adder on this particular track. So that's interesting information to gather from this particular footage. That is something that is useful for us. So... 10th position in furnace making it within the same lap similar lap time with the adder just by a few milliseconds and all that is due to the fact that the spoilers do make a difference to traction and downforce around the corner which is pretty damn awesome but then again for those of you that are fans of the adder that are those of you that are fans of cars who are pretty decent but don't have the spoiler option that could possibly be a downside and not be fair and so that's an argument i suppose you can say as well Anyway, going into number nine spot, we have the Voltic top 10 spot. The Voltic makes it in the electric car. Insane acceleration. The fact that only downside to it is if you break around the corner, you don't get that momentum carrying on the speed as much as you do when you obviously accelerate. The acceleration is pretty poor when taking the corner, obviously. I would recommend not break, use, not using your brakes that many times as uh, you know, you do obviously benefit just by letting go of acceleration to carry on the momentum, I suppose, because the traction on this car is amazing. The balance of handling with uh, oversteer understeer is great as well. You don't get the tendency to lose your grip, I suppose, uh, get that tail swing. You don't get that tail swing at all. Very gripping onto the ground. And the turning circle is amazing as well. So obviously it's quite a small car. So taking that into consideration, one of the smaller supercars is pretty damn awesome. Not particularly my favorite because you don't get the gear controls as it is an electric car, so you don't really listen to, uh, you don't really pay attention to the gear changes because that's another key thing when racing, you got to pay attention to the gear changes and the revs and how your car responds to every corner to understand how the car is working on the corners as well. So that's number nine sport. We have a one minute, 0. 0.612 is the uh, lap time for the World Tick. We have the 9F Cabrio, OB 9F Cabrio, which we know is slightly f better than the normal Cabrio. Which, you know, is, um, I suppose, slight minute differences. Obviously, the addition of spoiler to the 9F Cabrio will make the traction better and downforce better. So, taking these corners will be much better as well. So, the number 8 Sport, I wasn't surprised at all. This car is really, really amazing if you know how to control it. Managed to do it at 1 minute point oh oh five zero zero. So, that that is cool. I'm not even saying the decimal points appropriately. Wow. All right. So, um... Yeah, definitely, you know, you, 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 but the thing is, this car, right, you got to understand, even though it's top eight spot, this car is one of the most oversteering cars in the game that you'll ever experience, right? Literally, if you make a mistake, if you're not paying attention, if you're not concentrating to the minute details with the speed and taking that corner, brother, you will feel the pain. And I'm telling you, look at that, even that little scrape gave me that momentum for speed. It's ridiculous how this cars work in this game. Little bump and notch actually benefit you depending on how you do it, you know what I'm saying? So... Anyway, number eight spot, 9F Cabrio. Moving on to number seven spot, we have the Jester. Jester, out of all the cars, this freaking car has one of the best handling in the game out of all the cars. All right, literally the turning circle available in this car at the speed that you go with the momentum that you get when taking a call, especially with the 1.14 spoiler addition to traction 
and downforce, you are going to dominate with this car. All right, especially with track on a track consistent of many corners because the top speed does suck on the Jester. However, the momentum and the speed that you carry due to the traction and downforce is amazing. You literally do not have to brake. You literally let go of acceleration for turns and take them comfortably with ease. And that's the thing about and the beauty about this car. A lot of people underrate this car. There's more of an underrated, underrated, I must say, you know, when you compare it to other sports cars within this category, a lot of people don't take this into consideration of how good it is if you actually perfect it and really sort of risk it with corners and really push yourself as well. So that's pretty awesome lap time there. Now going in, closing up to the uh, sort of the minute mark here. With the lap time, obviously the Feltzer is expected to be in the top 10. It's an amazing car, especially now that the spoilers actually work and it benefits this car even more than it already. Not, not, not already, sorry, but you know the car itself is amazing already beforehand, before the year sort of changes. But now it's even better. So managed to get a pretty awesome lap time. Um, one minute, point oh oh point oh two nine. That is absolutely uh, crazy, just considering that it's on par with a lot of other supercars that are going to be on this list. And you've seen it's better than quite a few of the supercars we've seen already, which is insane. Acceleration in this car is pretty damn awesome. The revs actually do benefit you if you hit the side of a wall. Just saying it works just like the Zentorno. But uh, this is just longer gear ratios, I suppose. And... Uh, yeah, now we approach the final corner. It's got the thing about this car, it's got a drifty feel, but you sort of expect it's very predictable, so it's very easy to control the car. Uh, that's something that you gotta understand about. So obviously, point of these cars in the game, you've got to understand how they work, and that's an important factor to racing. Anyway, number five spot, we have the cheating man. This is a pretty damn close lap time to the felt, so just a point two of a difference. Literally a point oh oh two of a difference, sorry. Correct myself there. And uh it's one of those things that literally would probably be a photo finish if you were to go against the Feltzer with this car. It's another one of these cars, man. Making the top five spot. You know, it's a pretty awesome car. Honestly, here's the thing. If a person that is doing pretty poor with the Zentorno, right, for example, and you're going against the Cheetah. The Cheetah, if, if a good driver is driving the Cheetah and is doing really well with it and perfecting every corners, you will beat the Zentorno with this car. That's what I'm saying because... You know, the thing about this car is it's rather easy to actually uh, stick to the ground. It's pretty low, so if you get little bumps and notches, you don't go and take huge air times like you would do with the Zentorno. Obviously, because this one actually is so low to the ground and it's perfectly balanced because it's not like the Turismo where you sort of hit in curbs all the time. Uh, it's got a perfect suspension level sort of to the ground and, you know, just general sort of bumper level. And you get a gap, so you easily go over curbs without any issues whatsoever. And it doesn't have the issues like we have with the Turismo. However, at the number spore for... So number four sport, sorry. We get the Turismo. What do you know? You know, managed to do it within a minute. 59.697 seconds. What's crazy is that I did a little drift there as well. And the fact that after so many hours of trying, this was my best lap out of all the laps I've done, which is so weird. But it's all about momentum, people. You know, if you take that corner really, really fast, and it doesn't matter how you skid out, and if you control your car and then take the consecutive corner properly, then it's all fine. That's just the way it works. Um, So yeah, you see here, Thing about the Zentorno is that's absolutely amazing for handling. The only downside is the curbs. You know, going over curbs just because of how low this car is to the ground is much lower than the Cheetah. Especially the front, you know, when you're trying to go over small curbs and whatnot, trying to take a corner. If you don't take it right with appropriate angle, you're forced to take a different line. That's not going to benefit your car and that's going to affect your lap time. I try my best. The problem is, like, you know, this wasn't the most efficient thing with lines and whatnot that I was taking because... You know, it's very, very risky because it was very unpredictable as to when I'm going to flip because this car can literally flip if you hit the curb and that's it. You're screwed. Literally screwed. So it's a very unpredictable car due to the uh, fact that it's so low. But look at this. Look who makes it the third spot, my people, my fellow brothers. The car that we know is, oh, I ain't going to say it, but it's goddamn powerful. I'll tell you that. It is one of those cars, man, that is just baffling because I'm going to be honest with you, all right? This took, for me, the most comfort and ease to get this lap time, all right? There was literally no struggle. Consistently, I was getting 59s every single one of these laps. Consistently. The point of just those minute, minute seconds that I was just working with. And the fact that you literally don't really need to concentrate as much with this particular car compared to the other supercars to do well with. 
and even supercars and even sports you know within this list that you've seen so far and that's baffling for me because this car does not take any skill whatsoever and that's a guaranteed fact coming from me and the whole beneficial point of this car is the acceleration when taking the corner that's all it is that's the reason the beauty of this car the traction and the acceleration you get from taking the corner the fact that you have to sacrifice a little bit of speed just to get the immense boost afterwards anyway what do you know second spot entity 59.010 this is god damn amazing after the uh 1.14 Spool edition. You know, I'll guarantee you, right? I'll guarantee you the uh, the actually never mind, never mind. That would make no sense whatsoever because the one to one ratio. I thought I was going to say, I was about to say the uh, the elegy would have beaten the entity, but that was not going to be the case because obviously both of these cars do have a spoiler, so it's just a one to one ratio anyway. So entity was going to win regardless against the elegy, but the point is the elegy is so up there. It's top three spot. It's just ridiculous considering other sports and supercars as well. But yeah, now we're going to see, obviously, I'm sure you'd expect what the number one car is going to be. But it's pretty awesome to see that before 1.14 patch, this particular track, no one could even beat a minute lap time. Literally, no one can get past that. No one can get into these digits. Now you see, you know, 59 seconds, freaking amazing with these cars. Now, at number one sport, bloody hell, I've got 58.792 with the Zentorno. This car benefits the most from patch 1.14 obviously every car does with a spoiler but this car the insane traction and downforce you get with these corners literally this car right if you really want to be the best with it you have to push yourself to the point where you, so much concentration involved with understanding the gear ratios and the way the car revs up around every corner and how you want to mini max with this car is down to how skilled you are at the end of the day and when it comes to competitive racing that's where it's going to be decided on who's going to push themselves who's going to take the risk who is going to be down to push them down for the millisecond which is going to be important so i'm going to be excited i'm really actually you know, i'm excited myself to actually try out the playlist racing which i haven't done in a while with the 1.14 changes with the zentona which i have yeah, you know, I still have to do that after these changes to do a competitive playlist facing, which I, you know, still got to do, as I said. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. This has been a long commentary. Sorry for sounding so juicy, but you see the list here for you that you're, if you're interested in, go ahead and check it out. I'll be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys soon. Make sure you drop a like if you did enjoy and find this useful. And yeah, she is now gonna have peace. Yeah! Hey guys, she here, right here, yeah, G, you know, welcome to GTA 5 Carvey Car episode of the Lampathetic Pig Alley going against the JB700 Sports Classics comparison today. Whoa, that response.